Here is what a lot of people say in investing. The trend is your friend. But is it really? Because then we've also got these other sayings. We've got something like, buy when there is blood in the streets. And when there's blood in the streets and the price are crashing, then that trend is downwards, right? So the trend isn't your friend when it's crashing, but the trend is your friend when it's going up. But then maybe there's euphoria and you should take profits there. So what's really true here? I believe it depends. I believe it depends on your time horizon. The trend is your friend on medium-term time horizons. The trend is not your friend during flash crashes, so in the very short term. The trend is also not your friend during the very long term if it's negative, especially if it's negative. So if you've got an asset class that tends to stick around over the decades, and we see one or two negative years, then the trend is obviously not your friend. There is actually a negative correlation between past performance and future performance if we only look at the negative performances. In other words, if there was negative performance in the past and we correlate this with the future performance, we tend to see outsized positive returns. So that's another thing a lot of people say, right? A lot of people say, Past returns don't predict future returns. And what's implied here is simply that if something went up a lot in the past and doesn't have to go up again in the future. But there is actually a connection between past performance and future performance if we went down in the last one or two years. And the future performance tends to be higher. So when is the trend, your friend? It's on the medium-term time frame. It's not on the short term because if we flash crash, we get potentially some forced liquidations. People have to sell. You want to take advantage of this, right? You want to be the buyer of last resort. But on the other hand, if we're simply just trickling down for a while, then we tend to go down for a bit until we hit rock bottom, until we're clearly undervalued and there's no more sell pressure. So there's two ways to think of a bear market, right? There is obviously people panicking and selling off prices. But that's only the beginning of a bear market. What happens after a while, after we've already declined for a while, is that people simply don't look at the stock market anymore or at the crypto market anymore or at the property market anymore. They simply don't pay attention anymore. So there's apathy. When that happens, if there is zero attention, if people don't even sell anymore because they don't want to look at their portfolios anymore, that's normally the time to buy. That's normally when the trend isn't your friend anymore. That's when there is blood in the streets. So it's actually not the blood in the streets. It's simply just the zero attention in the streets. It's a silent streets, so to speak, right? If nobody looks at those streets, if everything is super silent, if everything is super quiet, that's when you want to buy. And you want to sell when everyone talks about the asset, right? Where attention is high, when the media talks about it, and when the random people that normally never talk about investments suddenly start asking you about those things. And so there's ways even to quantify this. For example, when does it make sense to follow the Bitcoin price and when does it make sense to be rather contrarian? It makes sense to follow the Bitcoin price on roughly the four-month time frame. So I have backtested moving averages on this channel. I've started this channel with backtests of moving averages. And I've refreshed those backtests several times over the years. And what I found out is that the 120-day simple moving average tends to work the best for Bitcoin. It sometimes slightly moves around. It might be the 115 day. It might be the 125 day. It's not 100% set in stone, but roughly 120 days is a pretty good moving average. So when you go to a charting software like tradingview.com and you add an indicator to the Bitcoin price, make sure you select the daily time frame. Make sure you add the moving average, the simple moving average, and then select 120 days. And this gives you a relatively good gauge if you're currently in a bull market or in a bear market. If the price is above, we tend to be bullish. If the price is below the 120-day simple moving average, we tend to be bearish. So this is one of the tools I use to time the market. I use many tools, but this is one that I've backtested that have relatively high conviction in. And it's good to test this thesis if the trend is your friend. When you actually backtest a lot of different moving averages, right? All those different durations, 7-day, 20-day, 100 day, 120 day. If you backtest all of those moving averages durations all the way to the 200 day, 
what you'll notice is that most of them actually outperform buying and holding. Not necessarily the ones from one day to 15 roughly, but everything that goes beyond 15, once you include the trading fees, tends to outperform just buying and holding Bitcoin. So it does make sense to ride the waves. It does make sense to follow the trend. The trend is your friend, but especially in this four month time frame, it makes more sense. So if we crash down and we're down for more than a year in Bitcoin, we've crashed down 50, 60% and you believe that Bitcoin will stay around, then ignore this trend is your friend thing. Then simply buy when there's blood in the streets or better when nobody is watching. But if we simply just go on our merry way up, right? And we sometimes have our corrections, etc., but we still stay above the 120 day, then there's no need whatsoever to take profit unless you want to rebalance your portfolio, right? Unless you're overexposed now to crypto because you bought in so heavily in the bear market and you only want to have, say, 20, 30% maximum in crypto. And suddenly because crypto three, four, five X's, you now have 80% of your wealth in crypto, then of course, take profit, independent of where you think the, the price might be going, because nobody knows for sure where it's going, right? There's always a risk in everything. We're always just working based on probabilities. So for those reasons, it still might make sense to even sell if we overall are still bullish, if the trend is still intact. But for other reasons, I think it simply just makes sense to follow exactly that. The trend is indeed your friend, especially in crypto. I've run all kinds of back tests, also in traditional stock markets, etc. But when you just look at crypto, then this effect is relatively strong. So there is still this hurt mentality. There is still ever increasing attention. So as the price creeps up, more and more people learn about crypto. So there is this true effect. And it's not as strong in the stock market, for example, because in the stock market, there aren't as many active traders, right? A lot of people simply just dollar cost average in via their 401ks. They don't really look at the price that much. So there is way less market timing. There's also way more professional traders, right? A lot of quants, etc., that take advantage of all, of all kinds of very, very small inefficiencies. So they have a hard time beating the market when it's already that efficient. For crypto, that's a bit different, right? For crypto, you've got a lot of new entrants. And if you're simply just better informed than most other people, if you're in the top 20, top 10%, you can outperform the market. You can time the bottoms and tops better. So this is not an efficient market. It's not like nobody knows the future because nobody knows the future for sure, for certain, but we can give some kind of probabilities to certain outcomes. And I believe that the, uh, the magnitude of those probabilities is a bit stronger for more inefficient markets than it is for something like stocks where you might have like a 51-49 split, but for stocks, you might be able to make 55, maybe 60% probable trades. Always depends on how much knowledge edge, how much skill edge you have in a particular asset. Feel free to subscribe in case this is your first time here. Feel free to also give this a like. It will help the channel grow. And of course, see you next time. Cheers.